After a few weeks of having various FedEx issues calling customer support and talking to a representative named Jim who had a strong Indian accent, I have finally received my very own Valve Index. Yes, uh, whoopee. It was pretty expensive. I kind of have to make a bunch of videos about it so I can make the money back so I can afford food for Katya over there. And so you're gonna get a bunch of videos about VR. Today, it's about the graphics. If you've ever used a VR headset, you'll likely notice a few things after the whimsical charms of 3D immersion wear off. That being the actual software, the games, visually, they don't look great not compared to other AAA titles of the time. For a while, some and myself assumed various reasons for why this might be. Theories ranged from rendering two images at once to the fact that big dev teams just don't make games for VR. But it's a little more complicated than that. An example I might use is the best looking VR game, Half-Life Alex, from a big studio, big AAA, big budget game. It's big. But even still, it doesn't quite look as good as, say, Killzone Shadowfall, which released in 2013. It looks like, uh, you know, an, an average, good-looking, early PS4 game. But that's the best it gets. Other than that, it's... Uh, most games look like they could easily run on mobile phones. In most games, everything besides a few key assets looks pretty blurry. Actually, everything. Everything looks blurry. Text can be hard to read. It doesn't look nearly as good as just watching a TV, 4K, 1080p, or otherwise. Except for maybe that one. That, that might look worse. This is a pretty common concern across all headset users. Why do the games not look like the games? And today, I want to talk about why. First off, to get it out of the way, yeah, graphics aren't everything, blah, blah, blah. But for something built off of immersion, I expect that you expect high fidelity visuals. In VR, you do have to render two images at once simultaneously in... You know, that's that's pretty demanding. If there were two versions of a game, a VR version and a non-VR version, you would expect the VR version to run at half the frame rate. But there's a few other things to consider. Obviously, basic tracking for the HMD and motion controls is going to cost you some performance, outputting the display, and, you know, all that stuff. A high-end PC rig can run some modern titles at 100, 200 frames per second. And if you consider that, it should be no problem to run that very same game in VR. You just cut the frame rate in half, maybe minus a few points to accommodate for other VR thingies, and you'd be good. But it doesn't work like that. That's just, that's really the tip of the iceberg. Let me tell you. Part of this is simply due to the nature of a VR headset. Resolution, or at least perceived resolution. If you've ever used a VR headset, you probably know that they don't have the most clear image. On paper, these look good, but the reality contrasts heavily with these on paper specs. After all, a lot of these headsets have at least 1440p resolutions, but they don't show it. And this is because of, one, it's far closer to your face than the average television or phone, and two, the field of view. The way this works out in practice makes the resolution of the display more or less a, a pretty irrelevant stat, at least by itself. Instead, a much better metric is pixel density per degree. That's degree on your eye's field of view. Now, it's estimated that the human eye can see about 60 pixels per degree, any higher than this, and it really won't be that perceivable. This is calculated on VR headsets by taking the horizontal pixel count and dividing it by the field of view. Keep in mind that most VR headsets are measured per eye with two separate screens. Now, interestingly, these displays aren't 16 by 9 displays. They're actually more pixels vertically than horizontally. So if 60 is what we should strive for, what do we have now? Well, not that great. Let's take the PSVR headset. It has a horizontal resolution of 960p per eye and a field of view of 100. So with this, you can take 960 times 2 and divide by 100. And this comes out to 19.2 pixels per degree. That's not great. This generally results in a pretty muddy image. But when the density per degree is 
this low, something else will manifest on your screen. You may have noticed it before, but you can actually see the individual pixels, the blank spaces where there isn't a pixel as well. This creates something called the screen door effect because, well, everything looks like you're viewing it through a screen door. Now, this also means that a wider field of view also requires a higher resolution if you want to keep those effects minimal. This can become a problem. But anyway, for something like the Oculus Quest 2, a newer headset, it has a lower field of view at just 89 degrees, but it has a much higher resolution at 1832 horizontal pixels. This comes out to 41.16 pixels per degree. This is good, actually, but keep in mind this number is heavily dependent on that field of view. And if it had a higher field of view, this number would go down quite a bit. But here's the thing, even 1440 horizontal resolution is still 1440 per eye. That means that normally these headsets are pushing out near 4K or even higher resolutions. That's a lot of pixels. It's often accepted that a 90 Hertz refresh rate is the bare minimum for VR without causing motion sickness. Even based on Epic's own suggestions for VR development, mobile hardware should be targeted over desktop PCs because even with the highest end rigs, it's probably not going to be fast enough for VR. In short, we don't have the hardware yet to support these kind of games, and we don't even really have the headsets to support the visual density. And when we do, the modern titles of consoles and PCs will still blow them out of the water. VR will always look worse than these releases, unless some new magical rendering technique changes everything. Speaking of, what about those magical rendering techniques? First off, ray tracing. Ray tracing really isn't a thing in VR. I mean, it can happen, it has happened, but consider that ray tracing often costs half of your performance. So if you wanted to run a game at 90 FPS in VR with ray tracing, it would have to be a game that runs at 180 FPS with ray tracing at very high resolutions. There's a lot of hurdles here, and trying to get something that looks really good on VR will make a computer feel like it was sent back to 2005 and turned into a MacBook, trying to run Zoo Tycoon 2. My personal solution for this is... wait. Just wait.